We're going to go back on the 24th of July with audioboot.fm stroke top goal. And if you're watching on my video, you're seeing Daniela Rossi's rare insight into the life of Mexico's high society. Just the uh, sequence is called Living Dolls. It's in the Sunday Times magazine. If you're watching this, you'll notice it's being done with a Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc. And uh, I'm recommending a quick look at the Sunday Business Post and the Sunday Times through my eyes. Uh, American living in Ireland. Front page of the Sunday Business Post deals with things concerning financing, tax bases, and things like that. Ireland's in a bit of a rut right now when it comes to money. I'll talk about that on my blog, www.insideview.ie. Write about it on Twitter at Topcold. You're listening to me on audio.fm, Topcold. And um, on Google Plus, I'm actually a real name, Bernard Goldbach. Okay, just some quick things inside these two papers. I'll try to do this outside, it was raining. First concerns the Euro funding wrangle damaging Irish food. And it's an article written by Tina Marie O'Neill. Her point is that the uh, leader program, the, and she pulls a, a, fo a face, the face of Declan Rice from the uh, Kenny Leadership Partnership. Leader pulled the money out of the wrong pot. Basically 80 million euro a year spread across rural Ireland is where um, the network would have funded some of its uh, stuff. And uh, now there's, a, there's some issues about whether the money is actually there for the rest of the year. It's going to make it difficult, so says Declan Rice, to support local food events, festivals, and uh, plans to create Kilkenny's Food Village. We're we'll looking on interest of how that's going to come out because the news focus in the Sunday Business Post is actually about food. Um, it's going to be challenging you know, the money to promote it. Reimagining the bailout is the challenge for Michael Noonan, the finance minister. The article is written by Cliff Taylor. He outlines what do the cuts mean, cut in the interest rate. Well, the cut does mean that, that the benefit looks like the full benefit will hit Ireland, which is going to be about a billion euro a year, possibly reaching 1.1 billion, which will make it a little easier to get a stimulus package to the Irish budget in the next two or three years. Adrian Wecker writes about the sad, slow decline of Nokia. I don't know if I agree with some of the, the conclusions that he makes. I mean, I, I'm with him. There is there is a decline of Nokia at the moment. They're repositioning their, their phone and their, their technology. Adrian uh, kicks the shins of the Symbian operating system, which I like. I don't like how it manifests itself as, uh, you know, on the screen. It, it's kludgy menu and things like that. Um, he says that, you know, the iterations of... Uh, iOS and Android are making it more difficult to climb aboard, back on board with Nokia. Thing is, um, the apps are what makes those things work. And I was there when Nokia launched its Avi store, and uh, it's a weak sister compared to the effectiveness of the other apps facing stores. Avi's better now, but it's nothing like uh, the experience you get in iOS. Adrian also points out social networks, citing Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and LinkedIn. Um, I don't know if I'd agree with this. Adrian's suggesting that um, if you're looking for friends and acquaintances, you can't beat it with Facebook. That's true. If you're looking for engagement, you can't beat this cute little icon called Google+. It's in its infancy. Only 20 million people are on it, but wow, is it effective. Helen Buckley writes about the problems concerning jumping on board for child abuse. That is to say, to have mandatory reporting every time child abuse uh, occurs and the point she makes under a caption is mandatory reporting is far more complex than it appears here's one reason why you know if i'm on the playground and i intersect intercept uh, a youngster who's abusing well jumping on the back of my uh, four-year-old and i emotionally traumatize the um, perpetrator then that perp can go home cry to mommy that some american was yelling at him and I can get done for child abuse, which is crazy. In America, you might not get this headline. It was tragic. It was on, it's on my blog, uh, Hell in Norway. Scores of people shot down by a gunman. Um, great article about it in the Sunday Times. Careful coverage and uh, very thoughtful. Noonan battles the ECB to burn the bondhold bondholders at zombie banks. So says Stephen O'Brien on the front page. And, uh, you know, here's the, here's the point. It would have made it, it would have been very difficult to pay back the interest in the short term. But getting 15 years to pay back the loan and having a lower interest rate means you actually might get to a 1.5 to 2% growth rate in the Irish economy. And that would be good news. Two-page coverage of the slaughter, 
of innocence turning into paradise into hell uh, well written uh, lots of the stuff that's in the article actually came from blog posts uh, I regurgitated one of the blog posts in English on my own blog at InsideView.ie Matt Cooper is pointing out something that uh, Americans might not realize that a civil servant here can't be called in front of the Doyle can't be called in front of the House uh, the representatives elected representatives and I think it's about time that you know the good name of some of the civil servants that led Ireland down the path of the, this current very austere financial the uh, austere austerity imposed by the EU. Some of those guys ought to be pulled in front of a public hearing and asked, "We just what what, what spreadsheets were you looking at and whose, whose advice were you following?" Um, Cooper is a journalist and a GA commentator. I agree with them. It's time to blow aside the veil of secrecy that protects civil servants. It's not in the interest of transparency and an open society to allow someone to hide behind their working shop. I uh, fingered this a photo of um, the Car Sensa caravan. Tears with every step along a long march of withered infants is the article. It's about Somalia. Um, I like that plane. And something inside of me thinks that 10 years from now, we'll be flying an aircraft like that in Ireland. Now here's something I will cover as a separate piece. It's a front page item in Agenda magazine. The article on the front page is called Ahead of Their Time, The Challenges Facing Ireland's Gifted Children. It deserves a read. I need to maybe qualify that. I am really interested in kids with potential. And the article I think is basically well written. The words by Catherine O'Mahony, photographs by uh, Fergal Ward. Intelligent design is what it's called inside. So for me to read the whole thing would take about 20 minutes of your time. I'm not going to do it. I will write about it. Um, the point that got me was that it starts with uh, a blog post written by Tommy Cullison, himself, someone who's gone through the Center for uh, Talented Youth in Ireland. Um, the word gifted appears throughout the article a lot of times. It's a common term. It's a divisive term. It's one that deserves pedagogical and societal thinking to get it right, to get the mix right. Anyway, as I said, I'm going to write about that separately because I think it deserves covering. As I said earlier as well, if you want to catch up with all these things that I said today, you can find me on Google Plus, Bernard Goldbach, on my web blog, www.insideview.ie. Twitter, I'm Top Gold. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye for now.